Welcome again guys, CSI NET module 1, we are talking about biochemistry and in this video we will be talking about hemoglobin and myoglobin, two of the very very important proteins in our body which are required to function properly. So let's talk about them, slight differences, some important properties and facts, so let's begin with hemoglobin. You all know what is hemoglobin right, hemoglobin is a core molecule that is required for carrying oxygen in our, in our blood. Now, the, as you look at the protein hemoglobin, it is obviously a big protein, a huge protein, because it is kind of complicated. It's a globular protein, and in this soluble globular protein, we are having oligomeric nature. That means it is made up with more than one subunits. So, actually, hemoglobin is made up of two different side chains, which is one is alpha, one is beta, and actually, it is made up with those two side chains four so two of each side chain so total four side chains are added together and they form what is called a quaternary structure you know quaternary structure means that is made between uh, more than two polypeptides and those polypeptide sequences are folded in the secondary structure finally those structures are combined together uh, via different bonding and uh, forces to produce the quaternary structure in the three-dimensional space. So that is about the structure of hemoglobin. Now usually the structure of hemoglobin can be altered due to the binding of oxygen to it. It has two different forms, one is the R state, another one is the T state. Once the hemoglobin is bound with oxygen, it is called as the R state. So oxygen is added, right? On the T state, there is no oxygen. So it is minus oxygen state, is the T state. Try to keep this in your mind because a lot of questions kind of come from this side. Another important thing is the heart of this molecule hemoglobin is iron because iron needs to be placed in between because if you look at the structure, I haven't drawn the structure, you can look at in your book, that the structure of hemoglobin, it consists of the heme or it is called the porphyrin ring. In this porphyrin ring on the middle, four different rings are there and the middle, there should be an iron. Now here the iron, it has a different, uh, different valence uh, like that. So generally iron present in the state, many, di many different kind of state, Fe2+, Fe3+. So usually once the iron plays a present in the stage like Fe2+, this is the time they want to bind with oxygen. So during binding to the oxygen, Fe2+, is the state which encourages hemoglobin to bind with oxygen. Remember that. Now, Obviously, these hemoglobins have tend to have more histidine residues in it because histidine imparts a kind of, uh, you know, uh, what is called as a buffering system to this hemoglobin. And that is very, very important because blood is, a, another very important task of blood is to maintain the blood pH, right? So, histidine slowly imparts that feature to hemoglobin. And if you look at here the pH value from here, the pH of the blood and all these things, if you can see that the pH of the blood, if the pH is low of, uh, for, for the hemoglobin here, if the pH is low, in those, if the, in solution pH is low, then it will bind with oxygen with very less affinity. If we make the pH higher, it has a strong affinity towards the oxygen. So try to really keep, in, keep this in your mind. So if the pH becomes very low in your blood, it tends to release the oxygen that are bound with hemoglobin. If the pH becomes slightly higher, it starts to bind again with the oxygen. Another important thing I must say here, you can see this is oligomeric, that means more than one uh, uh, subunit is there. Chromoprotein, chromoprotein, this, if, we, if I break it down, chromo means color, protein. So that means it imparts some color and that's right because presence of hemoglobin actually turn it uh, the color in red. We all know that. It's a chromoprotein. And another very important feature of hemoglobin is that hemoglobin is having a particular structure where if one oxygen binds, it helps to bind hemoglobin with another oxygen. It increases the affinity for that hemoglobin to another oxygen, right? So it's kind of, you know, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, work together process, right? Its uh, affinity is increased when one oxygen is bound. So it's 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 very uh, inter interesting mechanism for binding of different things. So that's about hemoglobin. Now let's talk about the myoglobin. You know, myoglobin is another, on the other hand, is another very important globular protein of our body. Now myoglobin is uh, monomeric compared to hemoglobin because hemoglobin is you know multi you know it's uh, having two different subunit two types of subunit two each so four ultimately but myoglobin is only one polypeptide chain it's a long polypeptide chain much longer than the alpha and beta subunits 
of uh, hemoglobin and it has eight helical segments so it's a large one but it has some segmented regions eight different helical segmented regions and again myoglobin like the hemoglobin also have histidine present there and the function of histidine in myoglobin is slightly different because the histidine that is present in the myoglobin helps to bind with or attach with again what is called iron which is found to be again present in myoglobin place to have a very important function because in these globular proteins there is the structural integrity that is maintained due to the presence of this type of cofactors there so here uh, this iron is present and also histidine is having a in group which that in uh, nitrogen that is present is have a lone pair of electron and that lone pair of electron helps to be attached with the iron and make the structure a little bit stronger now if you look at here generally myoglobin remember this generally myoglobin is having higher affinity towards oxygen than hemoglobin if you look at the graph of how they interact or attach with oxygen you find myoglobin is having higher affinity towards oxygen than hemoglobin so that's kind of about myoglobin now one problem is associated with all this situation and that is sickle cell anemia majorly related with our blood and hemoglobin what happens in sickle cell anemia there is a problem and that problem arises due to a mutation a single point mutation and that's the change of a single amino acid so single amino acid change causes sickle cell anemia right so they add valine instead of glutamic acid or something like that I exactly don't remember right now so I think valine instead of glutamic acid is placed due to that sickle cell anemia is usually caused now what sickle cell anemia does of I mean the problems associated with sickle cell anemia is the decreased solubility of deoxy form of the hemoglobin so if there is a decreased solubility of the deoxy form of hemoglobin so all those hemoglobins are kind of attached with you know uh, carbon dioxide and the oxygen is kind of not attached so so in that case hemoglobin tends to present in the T state which is the deoxy state remember deoxy state more uh, than the oxy state as a result of that it creates problem and the person will end up with very low uh, you know uh, oxygen uh, dissolved oxygen in the blood so it creates certain problems with this now after that I have a bonus answer for you and that is kind of a question that I've saw I've seen uh, in earlier exams and that is name one structural protein uh, that is so you can think about it just pause uh, for a moment now one structural protein that is also acting as an enzyme now you may uh, know that there are many proteins that act as an enzyme there are plenty of examples are there but name one structural protein that also acts as an enzyme well you can pause or think about it then I'm giving you uh, the answer and the answer is myosin remember myosin is a protein which is a hugely important structural protein but it is also an enzyme so bye.